10 things psychedelics taught me. Number one, the intrinsic value of life is life. You lose yourself the moment you go on searching for external means to add to the richness of your life. One of the fundamental realizations you begin to understand as you become more emotionally and, say, spiritually mature is that you start to realize that nothing external will ever fulfill you. And so long as you keep thinking that your happiness depends on conditions, so I'm referring to conditions as in, you know, other people, other things, other places, you know, things like vacations, relationships, jobs, salaries, money, gold watches, anything that comes externally, anything that arises because of a condition, if you fall into this illusion of that happiness is dependent on these things, which many people are, because they're attached to the physical 3D world and think that's the only real reality, when they neglect the inner reality, then that's when you lose yourself. Number two, gold chains are just as restraining as iron chains. Most people are enslaved in the name of freedom. When we think we are poor, when we don't have money, we're shackled by iron chains, rusty iron chains. But in the name of chasing success, we replace these iron chains when we get money. We buy ourselves gold ones, you know, gold plated, the real thing, 24 karat, the purest form, gold chains, diamond chains, emerald chains, it doesn't matter. We become so deluded by this idea of external wealth and shiny objects literally that we then become enslaved mentally spiritually emotionally by these objects this goes back to number one in in the sense of when we become dependent on the outer world for our freedom when we become dependent on conditions for freedom and love and fulfillment then we are automatically losing because we are enslaved by that idea. And it's a mental construct in our head that controls us so that we're not really free. Number three, beware of any notion of freedom parading itself as a promise in the future. The illusion of time. You know, we think one day when I finally make this amount of money, when I finally get this degree, when I finally get this job, when I finally get this relationship, that one day I can be happy. So you see how this connects to number one is we're depending on conditions. Again, we are enslaved by the chain of time, by the chain of conditions, by the chain of falling victim to physical reality. And we think that freedom is a promise in the future that we can only attain in the future. Well, you can wait your whole life. You can be a brokey and wish for, wish to become a millionaire. When you become a millionaire, you're so busy thinking about becoming a billionaire that you forget what's right under your feet. So you see how it's a state of mind, right? We can always be grateful for what we already have and see how it is more than enough for us to to be blessed and to live and to thrive in this world. But instead, when we choose the lack mindset, then nothing will ever be enough. And that's when we become chained, whether that's by iron chains, silver chains, gold chains, or diamond chains. Number four, choose your interval of operation. Grind ruthlessly for three years, Burn out for 12 months. Enter flow state for three hours, your other nine will be relaxed. Equilibrium is always achieved. Existence, nature, the universe is always harmonious, even though it doesn't seem so. There's good and evil, there's tall and short, there's rich and poor, there's big and small, there's fast and slow. Every contrast you can think of the universe can only manifest because there is one side of the pole. We'll call that the positive. You might call it yin and the negative. We might call that yang. So we're applying this exact same principle, which applies universally to existence, to the concept of burnout. Some of you through experience, me personally, 
I've tried grinding for an extended period of time. And that might be for a couple of months, could be for a couple of years. But that, that grinding will always come back to you. It's a cycle. It's never, it's never just one side of the coin. A coin comes with two sides. So if you say you, you grind for three years straight, and maybe that's your cap. For some people, it might be seven years. For some people, it's three months. For some people, it's one year, three years. doesn't matter. But once you hit your cap, the, uh, the, the coin flips, right? You enter the, the other half of the cycle, and you'll burn out. Now, if you choose to grind for an extended period of time, you're going to burn out for an extended period of time, right? But you can decide what interval of time you want to operate your life in. If we compare this to allowing yourself to work ruthlessly or enter the flow state where you're maximally optimized for productivity for three hours in a day, and you allow your other nine hours to be relatively relaxed, then you don't enter this time span of grinding for three years and burning out for 12 months. So it's really just up to you, right? Equilibrium in this sense will always be achieved because it's a cycle and you get to decide how long you want your interval of operation to be. Number five, invite your dark side in for tea. Don't invite her to your bed. This one speaks to the dark, repressed, ugly shadow side in each and every one of us and majority of people are not aware that they possess the same spirit that possessed hitler stalin mao all of these extremist tyrants they're all all of these qualities are a part of us now they may not be nearly as monstrous and gigantic as those tyrants who committed horrendous crimes but nonetheless, they are in us and they lay dormant. And the more we repress them, the more they will unconsciously rise to the surface. So the key is once we understand that we all have this dark side, whether that's jealousy, greed, hatred, anger, resentment, all of these, they're a natural part of the human existence and experience and we must not deny or repress them because when we try to when we try to deny them what ends up happening is we try to eradicate them so in the case of world war ii we see a group of an entire race of people being blamed for evil and what do you do to evil you try to eradicate it so it's a fundamental kind of schizophrenia with the inner world with your own inner world that eventually manifests into the outer world and it can lead to entire genocides. So the key is that we invite our dark side in for tea as guests, but we don't invite them into our bed. We're not falling prey to the lust to let this take over us, but we invite it in as a friendly guest to acknowledge that it is a part of us. Number six, life is meaningless. You get to create the meaning. All your life you hear all of these religions spouting, you know, what is God, what is real, what is true, what is false. And every religion seems to say that theirs is right and everything else is false. But if that's the logic you want to play at, then who knows the truth? It would be pretty absurd. It would be pretty blindsided to assert that one religion has the truth. But many people choose to take on this belief because it resolves them from the inner conflict of the uncertainty of the universe. And in becoming dogmatic, you shield yourself artificially from the grave uncertainty of the universe. But we have to realize that this, this shield is fake. It protects your false sense of ego, this need to feel right. We mistakenly think feeling right 
equals feeling safe. But nothing in this life can be held on to. Everything is always falling apart. From birth, you're in a free fall until death. And you can try as you might to control everything, but we all know what that leads to. Whenever we excessively exert control over things, all we end up with is anxiety, tyranny, frustration, burnout. You'll, you know these feelings if you've experienced it. But when we let go of this need to control and accept the fact that everything is fundamentally empty, and this is the fundamental of less, lesson of depression, I think, is that depression teaches you that life is meaningless. But instead of resisting it, we learn to surrender to it and to embrace it. And from this space, from this meaninglessness and emptiness, we realize we can create the meaning. That there's no other authority that creates meaning. It's our belief that they are right that gives it the meaning. So what are we choosing to believe into our reality? That's the meaning we create for our lives. Number seven, dynamic equilibrium. Physiological homeostasis masculine and feminine, ebb and flow of the wave, sound waves, supply and demand, it's all the same pattern, the oscillation of yin and yang. The world is made manifest by a series of yin and yang, of polar opposites. We simply cannot exist if there was no pair of opposites because non-being gives rise to being. Life gives rise to death. Death gives rise to life. Short gives rise to tall. Tall gives rise to short. You see how these all these terms are relative to each other. So you don't understand what good means unless you understand what evil means. You don't understand what it means to be a man unless you understand that you can also be a woman. So you have to understand relatively the opposite ends of the poles to create existence out of manifestation. Basically, once we understand this fundamental principle of equilibrium, of yin and yang, we start to realize that we don't have to be in a constant fight against life. And when we're, when we're not in a fight against life, we start to see both sides of a, pol of a political argument. We start to see both sides of good and evil. We start to see both sides of masculine and feminine. And instead of being attached and identifying with one side, we start to see how one gives rise to the other and how because both arise and how existence itself can only be harmonious as one harmonious thing when we accept, when we acknowledge and accept both poles of the same unity and that life is just a cycle a spinning cycle between the yin and the yang and when we stop rejecting the yin and only wanting the yang we start to see how beautiful life is and we start to appreciate everything not just half of life number eight a human being needs space to grow in the same way a plant needs water, sunlight, and air. If you give it too much water, it drowns. If you expose it to sunlight for too long, it withers. But if you allow it the proper space to breathe, it can turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. We're so caught up, especially as parents, telling our children what to do, and we become so identified with this role of parent. And when, when we grow up, we also become identified with the doer. We're thinking we always have to be doing things. We have to be achieving things. We have to be getting things done. But this over-identification with the doing, we become so busy doing that we forget our essential nature is a being. We live like human doings. 
but our essential nature is a human being. And when we don't give our space, don't give ourselves the space to honor our own being and our own life in all of its absurdity, in all of its ugliness, in all of its inadequacy, in all of its insecurity, in all of its flaws, when we don't give ourselves the space to honor that, then we begin to wither as humans. But when we realize that true beauty is not found in perfection, but it is found in the honoring of our imperfection, when we really understand that and begin to love and embrace that, that's when we turn darkness into light. That's when we turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. That's when we begin to breathe for the first time. Number nine, emptiness. Space, nothing. Emptiness is the fundamental reality. We think of being empty as something depressing. When reality, emptiness is the key to finding an intrinsic joy that goes beyond any condition and any sense of neediness. Like my last video said, the white empty space in which you see gives rise to the black words in which I'm typing. Go check that video out after this one if you're interested. Number 10. Most people use happiness as a mask to hide unhappiness. The first step to true happiness is to admit to yourself how deeply unsatisfied you secretly are. No amount of outward success can substitute for true happiness. It is but an appearance. Appearances are illusory. Most people use happiness as a mask, as a persona, as a personality. When we are afraid to admit how we really feel about life, we go on putting on this fake pretension. We pretend that everything is all right, you know. You know, I'm, I'm doing good, you know. But at the end of the day, all we are doing is lying to ourselves. If we don't really feel this way, then the first step is to admit this to ourselves. Because how long can you keep putting on this act? For some people, they can do it for decades. But for others, it takes no more than a few years for this shallow persona to shatter. For me, myself, I got tired of pretending like I was okay, like pretending like everything was good and that I was making my way and I was going to, I was finding happiness. I simply got sick of pretending to be something I wasn't. And when you can admit that to yourself, you actually find a greater empowerment because you start to speak the truth for perhaps the first time in a meaningful way. And when you start to see that your happiness is not dependent on needing to show other people that you're happy. That's literally when you find true happiness. You become independent of validation. You start to see through the, the folly of needing validation. And that that's what you were foolishly seeking in the past. And once you see through it, you begin to laugh because... You realize no one and nothing can take away your inner joy and peace. Only when you give your own power away, you give your energy away, that's when you become at the whims of the world. And then it's easy to just play the victim. And many people do that. But would you rather go on like that? Or would you rather... Take ownership and realize you are the power you have been giving away. So that's it for this video. I hope you found some valuable insights. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. If you resonate with this stuff, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe. 
I have so much more awesome shit coming out. Um, other than that, I love you guys. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. And I'm so grateful for you. Um, other than that, I'm out. Peace out.